our next presenter james spiller is an architect and educator he currently works at h l k b architecture and teaches at iowa state university in the department of architecture he is an avid soccer fan a texas expatriate enjoys summer night barbecues and has a zeal for architectural drawings welcome james everybody how you doing uh all right uh so everybody this is not architecture so to speak in the normal sense but what i want to talk about is hand-drawn visions uh, you know every great idea starts somewhere this one happened to change culture in a massive massive way um, now you know we see it in life for flights etc but it all started with drawing um, you're going to see a, a lot of drawings tonight so I, i'm going to try to be brief uh, this is uh, michelangelo started with templates he was a stonemason and renaissance man painter and he took these templates as you see in the top left and used them to create cornices um, and this really began what is sort of the standard architectural drawing or hand drawing um, items. And as you can see here, this is a, an artist named Gordon Matt Clark, who is a renegade architect, and he took old buildings and would deconstruct them. And you can see with this little sketch in the top left, just that little sketch, and a handful of friends, he ended up deconstructing this building, and that was a project called Bingo, really beautiful stuff. Um, drawing in general is used to achieve things we can't normally do. Um, here we're looking at a project by Robin Rode, he's an artist, and he finally figured out a way to dump the basketball. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I can finally do it. So it's about creating ways to envision uh, life, about ways to rethink the possible. Uh, this is a, a, a traditional artist, her name is Gago. Uh, she, she was in Venice, a Venezuelan artist. And on the left, we see this sort of typical line drawing. And on the right, we see a, a, a project of hers called Drawing Without Paper. And what it's about is it's about how the line can have its own space and how the line itself can breathe. And so when we, when we contrast those sorts of ideas with more traditional drawing types, such as Andrea Palladio's uh, Via Rotunda, you can see that there's a big difference between how we envision the you know, space of the line and how we envision its implementation. Uh, for, for instance, here, instead of it being a descriptive drawing type, we understand that drawing becomes a way of commentary. We understand that uh, this is a typical chapel drawn, you know, uh, sorry, built in uh, Spain, and we start to understand this difference between uh, the parishioner and the shadow that's behind the clergy. Uh, right? There's a dialogue that takes place. And so there are these ways of drawing visions that we can't express with language necessarily. Um, here we're looking at Piranesi's prisons. He did a whole set of drawings about prisons, and these were not real prisons. We had steps to nothing, and at the time when this is drawn in the 1700s, this was completely radical. Where are the balustrades? How do we keep life safe? So these become modes of political commentary. Uh, in this case, in 1960, Buckminster Fuller, who patented uh, the geodesic dome, uh, proposed the geodesic dome over Manhattan. This is a very serious proposition. He was arguing that this becomes a way of, of managing climate change. We can, in fact, keep more temperature inside. And so here we're looking at a drawing by East Van Der Rohe. This is the Seagram's building in New York. Uh, I'm sure many of you have seen lots of buildings like these. There's one in Des Moines that's similar. And on the left, we saw the first drawing that ever challenged a glass tower. That was the very first one right there. It's like. Can we have a building made completely of glass? Yes, we can. And here we're looking at, uh, this is a Russian group, and in the 1980s, <laughs> they were strictly mandated by the government to make uh, drawings of utilitarian purpose. And so these guys sort of became, they became called paper architects. And this was a very derogatory term at the time. But what they're doing is they were using pretty much uh, drawing, architectural drawing, to say that they, you, Fighting utilitarian drawing or, or fighting a regime will, will make people sad. <laughs> it will ruin people. Um, in another project, a very different version of paper architecture, we can understand uh, architecture is a way by which uh, to make commentary about society. In this case, we're looking at a project by Dillard Scafidio, which uh, is talking about how architects simply make picture windows. And so in this case, they've, they've made a house for a Japanese uh, client uh, where you drive through the window of your car, you pull up, you go through the door, and you walk up until you can finally see out the picture frame at the scene. And here we're looking at a, a, a drawing, a series of paintings by Zaha Hadid, who was told when she was in graduate school 
Um, she, she showed a professor a drawing, <laughs> and the professor very wisely said, come back when you learn how to draw. <laughs> so, you know, she came back, and, and now she's a world-famous architect. She's pretty much the leading female architect. Um, and it all started with these sort of wild paintings. And here you can see she's using different variations of, of the hand, in this case a, a paper bas relief, to explore ideas and to explore how do you start to articulate space, how do we articulate the world around us. Um, in, a, in a slightly different mode, um, this is a project by Levius Woods, who uh, is, is a great architect visionary. He, he finds ways of engaging things that cannot possibly exist. Um, and in this case, he, he was studying Sarajevo. Um, he's looking at a war-torn space and asking, you know, how can we create scabs? How can we create architectural scabs that start to uh, provide visual reminder that our world is broken and that somehow we need to repair that? Um, so he uses the medical terms of scabs and scars to remind ourselves that we cause harm to each other and that somehow we can start to repair those damages. And it's not necessarily about programmatic, it's not about square footage, right? It's not about making sure that my money as the client is going towards building a better building. It's about making sure that our, our world that we inhabit is engaging our social problems, our physical problems, and the things that we do to each other to tear each other down. And so I just want to remind everybody, uh, drawing, you know, from a, a children's doodle to a professional sort of engaged, um, Art, artistic endeavor is really about a dialogue. It's about a dialogue between the hand and the mind. It's about understanding what can I imagine, what can I think of that you know is not necessarily seen, and how can I walk that fine line between the impossible and the possible, and how can I start to convince people to take a risk on a different sort of future, on something that has not been imagined, just like the Wright brothers, right? Completely altering the flight of human history.